All right, guys, I'm here on Brickset.com taking a look at all of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings minifigures. If you guys are a Lord of the Rings fan like me, you know these guys are super expensive already. And with the new anime f from Warner Brothers and the new Lord of the Rings TV show from Amazon, these guys are going to explode even more in value. So you can expect every single one of these minifigures to become more expensive within the next two years. Um, I do own all 110 of them, thankfully. And I actually own, if you look at the numbers on some of these, I own many of them. So I own like five of this guy, for example. Uh, I'm not a reseller. I just really like the figures and I've been collecting for a long time. So that's why I have so many of them. Let's start out with the first most valuable minifigure. That is Bilbo Baggins, blue coat. He is exclusive to this Blu-ray that came out in Target. And he's pretty cool. I mean, he's got a nice print on him. But the real reason he's expensive is just because this Blu-ray was rather hard to find. And it came out in the first Hobbit movie. So you can imagine a lot of people weren't really on the lookout for this guy. And because of how rare he is compared to the other figures that came in sets, he's going to be super valuable. Kind of reminds me of like a less extreme version of a Finch Dallow from Star Wars. He's definitely not the coolest figure, but he's pretty rare, so he's going to be super expensive. Next figure is Grima Wormtongue. This dude came in Orthanc, and he was exclusive to it. You'll notice a lot of these figures are exclusive to one set. Some of the characters even are exclusive to one set, and this character was exclusive to one set. Funny thing about this guy is the only expensive part of him is his torso. Everything else is super inexpensive on Bricklink. So that's apparently enough to drive his value up to be the second most valuable minifigure. Aragorn, King of Gondor. This dude this is the guy I think, if you want to buy a figure and see him go up the most in value, I think this is your best bet. Aragorn's like the main character in Lord of the Rings, outside of like Frodo and Sam maybe. And he's super well done. He's got the White Tree of Gondor, exclusive double-sided cape, one side's black, one side red. And he's just a really cool character. And to top it off, the Lord of the Rings TV show should be about Numenor, which is the kingdom that helped found Arnor and Gondor. So basically Aragorn's ancestry. So I think a lot of people watching the show are going to be very enamored with this figure when, uh, when, they, when that sh Lord of the Rings Amazon TV show comes out. Right now, he is worth... $50 new, $42 used. I'm not here to help out scalpers, but to be honest, I'd expect this dude to double in price. I could easily see him over $100 in less than a year. So if you want to buy him, I'd recommend you to buy him now. Next, we got King Theoden, also a really cool figure. And while Aragorn will probably go up because of the Amazon TV show, this dude's going to go up because of the Warner Brothers anime. The Warner Brothers anime is about Rohan. So seeing King Theoden, a really cool Rohirrim figure, he's going to skyrocket in price. Probably also be worth over $100 like Aragorn. And probably Bilbo. Grima, I, I, I don't think Grima has enough draw to be super duper valuable, but he'll definitely still continue to increase in value. Mouth of Sauron's an interesting figure. He's super cool looking and also exclusive to one set, so of course he's going to be valuable. If Lego gets the Lord of the Rings license again, which I kind of doubt, but it is very possible, this is the type of figure that is not going to be made, remade again. So he is only going to increase in value, I think. There's a possibility he'll be in the Amazon TV show because this guy, believe it or not, used to be a man. 
So if he is in Numenor and he gets corrupted by Sauron, then we could see some version of him coming out, but it's going to be very different and definitely not affect the value of this guy negatively. Other figure, we got Saruman from Orthanc. This guy could see not increasing as much as these other figures, just because people like him because he is the special torso or special leg printing. But I could see a remake of him and people just preferring whichever Saruman variant they can get. They don't really care that much that this one is exclusive. So definitely not the best bet out of all these figures to buy. Radagast, very similar to Mouth of Sauron where he's never going to be made again, most likely. So definitely a cool figure that I would buy if you want him. Same story with Dane Ironfoot. Except I would expect Dane Ironfoot to probably jump these two in price just because he won't be made again. He's really cool. And who knows? There may not be a dwarf themed TV show coming out, but just because of how exclusive he is and how cool he is, I could see this guy jumping in price. Mary. So now this is like the funny territory with Lord of the Rings minifigures. Because if LEGO does get the license again, you can almost bet bet, I bet the house that they'll remake all of the Fellowship of the Ring minifigures. So Mary would be remade if a new Lord of the Rings theme comes out. I do still think this variant would be valuable, but obviously if they make a new version of this Mary figure... He's definitely not going to be rising in value as much as a Dane Ironfoot, who is still exclusive. So if you're just trying to get the coolest figures to have, super rare figures, um, two years from now, just like how some people were army building, like Captain Rex's, or Rebel Ahsoka, and then they skyrocketed in price, definitely get this dude. Definitely shy away from him and go more to these other figures that'll probably remain exclusive, like Mouth of Sauron. Or King Theoden, Aragorn, and don't get a Merry. Although, do get one, at least. Thorin Oakenshield. This is the coolest version of Thorin Oakenshield. He has his gold crown. Similar figure was in the Lego Hobbit video game, Thror. I would have loved to see that figure, but unfortunately it never came out. Oh well, we got Thorin here, and I'd expect this dude to skyrocket in price as well. One thing I'll note about Lord of the Rings, Hobbit theme, or potentially Amazon theme, is that the Lord of the Rings is always going to be more popular than the Hobbit. So you can expect both of these figures are probably around the same cool factor from a minifigure perspective, but because Lord of the Rings is so much more popular than the Hobbit, this guy is going to be worth much more than this dude, for example. So that's just something to keep in mind when we're looking through these figures. Lord of the Rings is usually cooler than The Hobbit for most people. First big fig on the lot, this guy is the Cave Troll from Moria. You can see I have been army building him. I have, I, I have probably, I think I have seven of this guy. Not all of these numbers are accurate. Um, but I have seven of him. So the cool thing about this dude is he's the only troll and he's army buildable. So that makes him pretty darn cool. I'm actually interested to see how much he's worth. Because we haven't taken a look at the prices for these last figures. I would say the cave troll would top out around $60 in value. I don't think he'll go too far beyond that. But it looks like he's only 35, around 30-ish dollars. So I definitely see this dude doubling in price. Owing the Dwarf and Gloin. I think it's funny these guys are the most valuable of all the Dwarves. Gloin makes sense because he's in Lord of the Rings. So the Council of Elrond, Gloin is one of the Dwarves that comes. So if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'd want him in your... Lord of the Rings collection, even if you're not getting all of the dwarves from The Hobbit. So I would expect this dude to be the most valuable. And I guess because Oin came, comes in the same barrel escape set, he's also really valuable. 
Pippin, really popular character, exclusive. And like I said, decent shot, he'll be remade along with Mary. So these guys could drop in price relative to the other figures, but he'll still be super cool and valuable. Nori, he came in the Goblin Chase. Not really sure why he's so much more valuable than the other figures from that set. He does have a cool spiky beard, so maybe that's why he's super valuable. Gandalf the White. This dude is my favorite figure from the Lord of the Rings. I have five of him, and he's super duper cool. He'll, there's a good chance he's remade if Lego makes him again, but I think it's just a really dope figure, and I'd expect this guy to increase in value a lot, especially if the Lego does not get a, another license with Lord of the Rings. Boromir, same story as all their figures in the Fellowship. Decent chance he's remade if LEGO gets its license, but super duper cool figure and exclusive to one set. Haldir, this guy kind of reminds me of Ninjago with his printing, um, some kind of ninja printing, but he's pretty cool. And this is a guy that I would, again, expect never to be remade, so he'll probably only be increasing in value. The Amazon TV show will have a bunch of elves, so there's a good chance we see more elves made if Amazon gets a license, but this guy, low chance he's remade. Amer. This guy is a funny figure because back in the day, people were army building the Rohirrim, obviously. The hardcore Lego fans were army building Amer, and they're also army building this Rohan soldier. And this Rohan soldier actually used to be more valuable than Amer. And the reason is because people don't want the same character a million times. They'd rather have a generic character a million times than a named character. So that's why he was the Rohan soldier used to be more valuable. But as more and more people now are getting into Lego, they don't really care about army building. What they care about is getting all the characters they know and love. So Amer is the character they know and love. That's who they want. Lord of the Rings figures are hard to come by. No one's buying 10 of them anymore, really, except for me and maybe a few other people. So um, people just want one. They're not greedy. Their sets aren't on shelves where they're buying 10 of the set and they don't want 10 named characters. People just want one. So people are buying one figure. They're going to go for the named character. And this guy's way cooler anyway than this Rohan soldier. So that's another funny effect to think about with Lord of the Rings Lego is it used to be where you have these hardcore Lego fans buying the Lord of the Rings sets. Now what we're going to be seeing is we're going to be seeing hardcore Lord of the Rings fans trying to buy the Lego sets. And because of that, they'll be more interested in the characters than they will be in army building, I would say. That's just my speculation, but that's what I would expect. Same phenomena with this Soldier of the Dead and King of the Dead. Soldier of the Dead, he's army buildable, so people want him more than King of the Dead. But now that these figures are getting rare and rare, I would expect King of the Dead to be more valuable than Soldier of the Dead. Next figure is Ringwraith. This dude, very minimal printing, but he's got a cool cape on him. And people do need nine of them. You can see I have eight of them. So I'm try I'm in the market trying to get one more of these guys. So a lot of hardcore fans will be wanting nine of him. So that's probably why he's so valuable, even though his printing is not too crazy impressive. Azog, he's a cool figure. I think this dude is artificially expensive, though, because... I believe this is a variant that came in the Comic-Con as well. So that's probably driving his value because even though he also ended up coming in a set, people still associate him with Comic-Con. So he'll probably be a little more valuable than the other variant because of that. Galadriel. She came in a really, really cheap set. This Witch King battle set. Take a look at it. This was like, what, a $10 set? $15. So to see this figure up this high is pretty funny. Let's actually take a look to see how much she's worth right now. Galadriel. 
she's so she's definitely worth more than the set she's worth 20 bucks so it's kind of funny to see a $15 set produce a $20 figure right now and she's definitely going to be in the Lord of the Rings Amazon TV show so if they don't remake this remake this figure she's going to explode in value past all probably a lot of these figures because she'll definitely be in the show you know obviously Galadriel's immortal if the show takes place thousands of years before she'll still be in the show if she's still alive Dory um this dude actually had the most lines in the Hobbit book he was the one who was carrying Bilbo in the Goblin Tunnels and in the Lego Hobbit video game you have to use this guy a lot so it makes sense that he's pretty valuable coming in the more expensive Goblin King battle set. Urukai Army Handprint. This dude, people love army building Urukai more than anything else for whatever reason. And this dude has a cool helmet printing. So he's going to be super expensive and just climb in value. Bofer. The reason I think this guy is more valuable than a lot of the other dwarves is because in the movie, he gets a lot more lines than other dwarves. So people would probably just recognize him, think he's cool. He's got a cool HUD print. So I think that's why he's valuable. Soldier of the Dead, army build. Ori, another cool dwarf that came in Goblin King battle. So expensive set, he'll be expensive. Rohan Soldier, people are army building their Rohirrim. They love the Rohirrim. They love the Urukai. So it'll be expensive. Um, but again, with these Grunt minifigures, there's a solid chance they're remade. Named characters like the Fellowship and Grunt characters like an Orc and Rohan Soldier, decent chance LEGO comes out with them again. Arwen. I'd expect her to jump in value. We're going to be seeing a lot of elves in the TV show. People will want this figure. She'll be super valuable. She'll probably be more expensive than all of these figures, maybe. Um, and then probably all of these except for Galadriel. Sam, other figures. Okay, now we're getting into the variants. Samwise, he's exclusive to one set, but he came in a $30 set. He is, however, most people's favorite lord of the rings character watching the movies a lot of people like sam the most so sam could be exploding in value more than pippin and more than mary so i would expect sam to rise in these rankings this guy probably never be made again so makes sense he's expensive these dudes came in erebor they're pretty cool they'll probably go up in value as well Goblin King, he is really well done. A lot of people thought he was kind of dumb in the movies, though, which I didn't get. I loved him in the movies, but people thought he was a little too cartoony. Bumbor, everybody loves Bumbor. I think this guy looks awesome. To me, I think this is the coolest dwarf to get. So I would want, I would personally think he should be more valuable, but, you know, apparently not. Apparently not. He'll go in value though. He'll go up in value a lot. Ballin, pretty cool figure. There's two variants though. Thranduil. This dude came in the Army Builder Mirkwood Elf Army set. Again, this dude used to be really cheap because people were buying that set in mass. But now that the sets are retired for a long time and they're rare, he's going to be increasing in value because it's no longer, oh, everybody has 10 Thranduils. It's most people don't have any figures at all, so they're going to want the name character Thranduil. And good chance he's in the Lord of the Rings TV show as well, because he's an elf who is immortal. Saruman, this guy, he's a cool character. People are going to want him, but if they remake him, he'll drop a lot in value. Philly, I think this dude's not very valuable because um, the other variants of him is super easy to get. So if you just want the Company of Thorn Oaken Shield, you'll probably buy the other variant. Elrond. To me, I find this odd. I don't see why Elrond here is worth so much less than Bilbo. Because Bilbo was this, um, let's see, he was in this Blu-ray thing 
whereas Elrond was in a GameStop pre-order for the Lord of the Rings Lego video game. So I find it odd that this guy is not very valuable. I wonder how rare he is in comparison to Bilbo, because if he is more rare, I could see him really exploding in value, especially the sealed polybag version. This one's just a better done version of this figure, so maybe that's hurting his value. Um, so that could be it. Witch King, pretty cool figure. Lake Town Guard, very army buildable, and not only that, but he'll probably never be made again. Again, if, if a Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, Amazon TV show comes out, they'll probably make figures based on the current um, current media, so Lord of the Rings and, or Lord, so Amazon and Warner Brothers, but the Lord of the Rings will probably have a lot of figures remade, but the Hobbit, I don't, it's, I don't see a guy like this being remade, if that makes sense. Maybe Thorn would be remade, um, so I could see him not increasing in value as much. Uh, the rest of these figures are not really anything remarkable. I think we all know these figures. This dude is Blu-ray. He came in this Blu-ray set. So this guy could be a sleeper candidate for increasing a ton in value. But of course, nobody really cares about him. But hey, people don't care about the character Finch Dallow, yet he's super expensive. So he could be worth tons and tons of value um, in the coming months and years. Rest of these guys... Orcs are kind of a tricky game, all of these orc minifigures, because while people are going to be army building them even more when more people get into the theme, he is kind of generic and they could just make a better version of him, so this one be could drop in value. I think any elves are going to increase in value, so this Mirkwood elf, I would expect him to increase a lot. All of these different elf characters are going to increase because of the Amazon show. Um, let's see what else. Bayorn, I think Bayorn's really cool. He came in a really cheap set again, so people have a lot of him. But because he's such a cool figure, like Dane Ironfoot, I could definitely see this guy rising in value a lot compared to these other guys third page all right these are the guys who are like worthless frodo gandalf yasnag all right so that's a look at the figures my favorite three figures are aragorn thorn oakenshield and probably of course gandalf the white wherever he was i passed him up here he is these are my three favorite figures but the figures that will increase the most will most likely be Thorin, King Theoden, and probably probably either Mouth of Sauron, Bilbo Baggins, or something like Amer because of the TV shows. So if you guys are looking to just buy a figure, have it increase a ton in value, I would probably buy any of these figures, will be your safest bets. Other characters that will increase a lot in value will be Galadriel, Urukai, Arwen, Sam. But like I said, all these figures are increased in value. The only reason I made this video is just because I'm a huge fan of Lego Lord of the Rings and I just wanted to go through and have fun talking to myself about these figures. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you at least found this video somewhat entertaining and let me know what figures you guys want or you guys think will be remade if Lego does get the theme again or uh, just your general thoughts on what figures draw your attention here. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good day.